With commentary and analysis on our hometown teams, this is the Bucky and Sully Show. Presented by Dave's Christmas Wonderland. Two locations, Union Road, Cheektowaga, and Transit Road, Williamsville. Now, from the WBBZ-TV studio, here are Buffalo News sports columnists Bucky Gleason and Jerry Sullivan. Hey everybody, welcome to the Bucky and Sully Show. I'm Bucky Gleason, I'm here with Jerry Sullivan. Calm down yet? No, I'm still wound up know, from our pre-show meeting. He's going nuts in there, and I, I think, oh, he must be arguing, you know, presidential politics or Mario to Winston, and he's arguing about the trivia question. So look, look ahead for that So trivia stay question. with us yeah. for the trivia question. Yeah. We got a big a show cluster. today, Sully. We have two guests. We have Jay Skursky coming on in about 30 seconds. We have Christian Leitner coming on in the second segment. He's going to talk about his basketball camp coming up and, of course, the ESPN documentary, I Hate Christian Leitner. Uh, so make sure you stay I with us. It's a big show. What's that? I said I loved it. It was a great documentary. We'll, we'll get to that one in, in due time. First, we need to get to uh, the NFL draft, which is coming up this week. And on the line right now, we have Jay Skirsky of the Buffalo News. Jay, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, happy to be here with you guys. What's going on? Nothing. Uh, not a whole lot, even for the Bills. You know, it's a little bit different without a first-round pick. You know, in Buffalo, you start talking about the first-round pick almost the minute that the season ends, which around here is early every year for 15 years. And this year, there's no first-round pick even, so it's taken a little bit of the air, it seems, out of the draft. What has it been like for you so far? Yeah, you know, it's tough to really get a, a really good idea of where the Bills are, are going to look with this pick. You know, one, because I think they've done a pretty nice job this offseason of filling uh, obvious holes on their roster. And then two, not picking until number 50 overall. It's, it's darn near impossible to project who's still going to be available, who may not be available when, when that pick does come up. So I don't know that you can necessarily really narrow in uh, on one player and, and say this is going to be the guy, this is the pick for the Bills at number 50 because he might get picked at number 38 or number 43 or, or whatever. Yeah, it's hard to get uh, excited about a guard dropping to 50, and I know in your recent mock you didn't have him taking a guard. Is that the way you're looking right now? They probably won't take one? Yeah, I, I mean, I've gone away from a guard. I just think that if you look at what they did last year, picking Cyrus Guanjo in the second round, they moved down a few picks and, and got him, and, and that seemed to be their, their starting right tackle when he was picked, and then he can't get on the field for him. He, he ends up being the worst second-round pick uh, in the entire NFL in terms of games played. Only appeared in one game, didn't play any offensive snaps at all. So, you know, even if you slot in the, the guy that you pick at number 50, it, it's a projection to, to think that he's going to be a starter for you. So I think they've got options at guard. I don't know that any of them are great, uh, but there's players on that roster, that, and Quandro is one of them, who may be able to fill that hole. So I don't know that guard is necessarily as huge uh, of a need as some people are, uh, w would have you believe. And, and I think if you're going to pick a guy at number 50, you're looking for, for a difference maker. I don't believe that this team values guards as difference makers, nor do many teams. Hey, Jay, let's go back to Quanjo just for a second. How do you explain what happened with this guy? I mean, he was a top All-American offensive lineman on a great team in a really difficult league. It's about as close to the NFL as you can get him coming out of Alabama. So how could it be that he, he just couldn't make the adjustment? Was, or was there something else that was in the way there? Well, I know that there was some concerns about his health uh, last year, and in particular a knee injury. But, I, you know, we didn't hear much about that during camp, and that certainly didn't seem to be the thing that was keeping him off the field. It was just a lack of readiness. I, I would say the one thing about Juanjo, uh, coming into the league last year, he was one of the youngest players in the NFL, maybe the youngest. I know he was the youngest on the Bills, and maybe it was just a, a matter of, of not having the functional strength uh, required to play in the league at that point. And, you know, if that's the case, then okay, fine. You expect to see a pretty big, uh, you know, step forward in year two uh, with a year of, uh, you know, an NFL weight program under your belt. Because uh, if it's not that, let's face it, we're going to have to start looking at this at this pick as a, a pretty big check mark against Doug Whaley if they can't get something from this guy this year. Jay, uh, Rex Ryan's vision of football obviously is at play here. The last five head coaches, I believe, for the Bills in their first draft, their first pick has gone on that side of the ball to their, you know, the side of their uh, specialty. Do you, do you think that could happen with Rex? Because I, I, I think he's got to believe that he could use another impact defensive player right away. 
I think it absolutely could happen in, in almost any position, really. Uh, I, I would start with pass rusher. If you look at the depth that they have on this team, it's really Mario Williams and Jerry Hughes and then nobody else. And so I think certainly, it, you know, if an injury were to occur at that position, this team would be in a really tough spot. So you could make a really strong case for that position at number 50. Uh, and then also looking down down the road a couple of years, Mario Williams has a contract number, a, a salary cap number, that isn't going to be able to, to last forever on this team. So if he, you know, becomes a, a cap casualty, you need to have a, a plan in place for when you eventually move on from him. So. I think uh, pass rush depth is sort of an underrated need for this team, uh, a very big one. Uh, Rex Ryan loves cornerbacks. You know, I don't think cornerback is a, cornerback is as big of a need right now, but certainly that's a position that you can always look to add to. Leotis McKelvin um, is a guy that you know is, is a sort of a higher salaried player that they might look to move on from. So, really, any spot on defense, um, I think you could make a case for for having a need and it being a very real possibility with Rex Ryan in the building. Hey, Jay, uh, on the national level, not just the Bills, you know, it's Winston, Mariota, one and two. It, it certainly looks like the Bucks. I mean, this is basically a done deal that they're going to take Jameis Winston. Are you surprised by that, or do you struggle at all with, with, with the two quarterbacks? One is supremely talented, you know, at Winston, and Mariota is a great athlete whose game might not suit the NFL, but he has, comes with less baggage. I'm not surprised by it. I think Winston uh, is probably the more NFL-ready quarterback at this time. And if the Bucks have, I'm sure they've uh, invested significant amount of time and resources researching his background. And if they feel uh, comfortable enough with, with the, the off-the-field concerns, and I don't want to make light of them because they are significant. You know, he was accused of rape. So it's not like this is... Uh, a guy who's got a few outstanding parking tickets or something like that. So, if but if they feel comfortable with those issues, then I think that Winston is the pick. I think he's been the pick all along, and I'd be surprised if it were Mariota or any other player at number one. It was shocking to me that right up until last week, the district attorney down there hadn't received a call from a single NFL franchise, not one. If I'm working for an NFL franchise and I'm doing the investigative work on this guy, that's the first guy I call. Or the second, yeah, maybe. It, the whole situation just reeks down there with the Tallahassee Police Department and, and the investigation and the way that it went and, and just the, you know, the seeming favoritism that they show toward not just Winston but Florida State football players in general in that town. I think it's a... It's like Orchard it, Park and the Bills. Really. Yeah, it, well, it, I think you can make that comparison when you hear that you know Orchard or that you know uh, football players like coming to Buffalo because it feels like a, you know a college town. Maybe that's one example of it. Jason, say so you don't have a fourth-round pick either. You think there's a, a decent chance they may uh, pedal either the second or third and get extra picks and move back? Well, I, I don't think so. I think Doug Whaley has sort of talked out of both sides of his mouth on that issue. It, at one point, he says that he would like to move, to move back and add picks and that they need to start building their depth. And then at the next point, he's saying that sixth and seventh-round picks are going to have a hard time making this team. So... You know, if he could maybe move down a, a few spots in the second round and pick up a fourth rounder, I could understand that. But a, a, outside of that, I mean, I, I value the top four rounds in the NFL draft pretty pretty highly. You know, the fifth, sixth, and seventh rounds, I know they found Sontrell Henderson last last year, and, and he did some good things for them. But that's, you know, that, that's a one every five, one every ten year type of pick when you hit like that. So if you really think that a sixth or seventh rounder is going to, to have that tough of a time making the team, why would, you be, why would you be in such a rush to add more of them? If anything, if I were the Bills, I'd look to package those two six-rounders and move up into the fourth round where I could get a player who I think is going to make the team. I, I don't think that they need uh, you know, seven draft picks on this team. If they can get three or four guys who can come in and contribute somehow, some way next year, that's a successful draft to me. Hey, Jay, last question. Uh, we have about 30 seconds or so. Uh, is there a quarterback out there, a lesser known, that you might know that if the Bills see him available in that in that third round, maybe even the second round, if he's if he's on the list, if he's still out there, that they jump on. Him. Well, yeah, there's three names who I think fit those criteria exactly. That that would be uh, Bryce Petty from Baylor, Brett Hundley from UCLA, and Garrett Grayson from Colorado State. All three of those guys are in the running to be the third quarterback taken. Where they fall in the draft could be anywhere from the bottom of the first round to the to the third to the third round. All right. Jay, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Great job, as always. we got to do the Sully, the trivia question. It got me so wound up. 
Oh, I can't and then wait. we're going to bring on Christian Leitner, uh, who will be coming in by phone. Let's get to the trivia question first. Which Western New York village is Christian Leitner from? Angelica, Elba, <laughs> Lewiston, <laughs> Angola. We'll have the answer when we come back if you haven't figured it out. You got a problem with Angelica? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> 